Hello, hello, it's Artists of Cold again, including Artur Wolny, Grzegorz Godlewski and Mark Kurbanowicz. In the episode number 23, we're gonna talk about some important decision that almost every developer, at least once in his life, uh, needed to make together with his team, maybe uh, with architect, which uh, is the decision uh, between picking the brand new design but unknown, unfamiliar for the team solution versus implementing its own solution using the tools that we uh, that the team already knows. Before we start, remember to follow us on Instagram, Facebook and on other social platforms and subscribe our channel on YouTube, follow us on Spotify and other podcast platforms. Here we go. Welcome to the Artistry of Code podcast, where we, together with our guests, are seeking ways of doing things right and having fun with it. Software, architecture, soft skills, teamwork, and other crazy buzzwords. Are you ready? Let's bring more value to the business. Okay, guys, so I know that each of us, at least once in their life, had this... uh, opportunity to to make that decision between something brand new and something we already know uh, including me even even quite recently i had some decision to make uh, when implementing the log streaming functionality uh, in my case i also needed to make some decision to make the development faster and uh, deliver uh, the proposed scope um, as ma- as fast as possible you know like optimizing the resources needed human resources of course uh, so uh, i could choose between you know implementing some uh, custom made solution in the Node.js, our beloved Node.js, uh, to connect the log stream to in particular outputs like CoraLogix, uh, uh, Logs.io, uh, you know, Splunk, or other services, uh, versus using some known tools that we already have, including uh, data pipelines uh, tools. Uh, so. In my case, the, the, that that wasn't uh, that easy, yeah. Especially when the time is short, and finally, I I made that choice to to try out new solution, which is actually uh, very interesting because it brings new challenges. But guys, tell me, what are your uh, experiences with that problem? Yeah, have you? What examples can you give from your uh, career? I can recall uh, the example from the past, uh, which wasn't really about the completely new project, but it was uh, about addressing the issues with the existing project. So uh, with the quite large uh, IoT platform, uh, we were struggling with the performance and uh, the resource consumption uh, and everything around it. There was the proposal to maybe switch to the a new language. In that case, it was uh, Go, Golang proposed. And uh, we had one enthusiast who, who was like trying to uh, to push this forward, which was for sure interesting for him and for us as well. But in the end, even though we, we, we saw that the benefits of this potential move, in the end, it, it wasn't really followed this way uh, because the lack maybe of, of time for all the developers who would have to like learn the, the completely new language, uh, which would uh, be a big challenge for the maintenance, for sure. And uh, also f- maybe from the company as well, because it, the, the, the learning curve for a whole team would be quite high and uh, would uh, incur quite a cost. Yeah, so Marek, in this example, you actually have chosen, right, the new tool and try it out. Uh, can you tell us, uh, you know, how it went? Yeah, what was the the feedback from developers? 
I would say that, that the feedback at the beginning was like people were interested. I was also interested in like learning something new. But uh, in the end, it, it was uh, the, the outcome was that we mostly focused on improving the existing the, the, the existing solution with the tools in Node and basically the, improving the whole code in, in, in TypeScript and improving the solution architecture and everything instead of switching to the new language. And the, the, the outcome, I would say, was, was pretty good, even without switching the, the language. Yeah, so we're finding ourselves quite frequently in the situations that we have to choose. What do we do next? How do we act on, in terms of like choosing technology, solutions, languages? And uh, each and every of us has a set of drivers uh, which are helping out in that decision making. Some of them are like business related, uh, specifically like if we need to have a short time to market, probably uh, trying to take something new, which we don't know without any external consultancy or any even um, borrowed expert on the team, which is going to bring us uh, bring us up to the speed with that technology. Um, it probably is not going to like function a nice thing about you know the example which you guys give in regarding like trying to switch in the middle of the project to go that was actually uh blocked due to organizational like aspects like when you start to ask yourself a question okay if i'm having a team of like 20 developers which are fluent in node.js and only one enthusiast would go so am I going to build up the product on a foundation of a single person which might leave the company? Do I plan to hire additional Go developers uh, in order to support the product, which was at that time already productive? So it was in production, right? So these were like some organizational aspects which definitely played um, uh, a part here. Yeah, it's an important driver, and uh, I, we also mentioned that yeah when we were in, in some previous episode that we were talking about some hype on on technologies, and uh, it's it's actually undoable uh, to quickly switch from one language uh, to another in the team. I also uh, am thinking about the organization aspect of um, you know other teams around because usually um, teams uh, are. Uh, developer teams are focused on creating the code, creating the solutions. And then we have like some kind of maintenance DevOps uh, teams that needs to take a, create a deployment pr procedure for, for the application. And it might be another challenge for them to cope with the new technology, new uh, aspects, of course, we might say okay but it's you know it's like a, if we as a team provide the artifact like container image for example then it may be slightly easier but it's not only about deployment it's also a problem solving on production yeah with new technology comes new problems that we'll need to solve yeah, then that's like being mindful of others and the like long term consequences of, of those technical choices is very, very important, right? So when I'm running a team, I typically tend to lean towards to uh, technologies and solutions which the team in its current form can support. So if I'm not having people around which are knowledgeable enough about certain piece of technology which we choose, I definitely discard this. On one hand, due to the fact that I'm asking myself the question, if that person is going to be woken up by an on-call phone, uh, like in the middle of the night, will they be able to deal with the problem or will we just have the problem till the next morning? And then perhaps we're going to have some external help from the vendor or somebody from the support on the vendor side to help us out, right? So these are like things which you might not think of as a developer, but I think you definitely should. Because we as developers, we like new thingies. We like to write code, but we tend to be very isolated in our thinking and not consider the, the long term there, right? So for me, specifically, when it comes to like choosing the tech, is I'm totally driven by the organization. So if we have to deliver something on some time, then I'm going to pick the solutions which are going to secure that delivery date so to speak, and that I will choose technologies which I feel will be feeling confident with 
uh, when they're in production so that I can say with enough confidence, yeah, I'm okay with having that there and I'm going to support that. And I know that my team members will also. Yeah, I, I totally support also this sentence, but I would, on, on the other side, I would just say that sometimes I can recall some cases that the learning for the team can be required yeah, because it depends on the, on the members of, of the team. It can end up that uh, we don't have the, the knowledge in the team yet around something, but uh, during the decision-making process, uh, we find we can find out that this is really like the, the best and the one solution. And uh, going with something which we knew, we know isn't really a g- good step because it it will give more tech depth, for example, yeah? instead of uh, giving the, the the proper solution. Yeah? So so this is like something which we can all should also consider during the making the decision. That's very uh, important thing that you mentioned, and I actually reminded some sentence from my pajamas, <laughs> the, uh, which uh, was stated, and I could see it in in the mirror for for, for quite a time, which was said. Uh, each and every achievement started with a decision to try. Yeah, so that's a very important thing. Yeah? If, if you want to try, at least, you know, creating a POC, we won't actually know what might be the outcome. Yeah, so it's it's probably worth a try. The POC is a, quite a good idea for it. If we, of course, have time for, for the POC, if we are given that opportunity by the by the business, we need to we need to follow that. And but important thing, keep the time frame <laughs> given by the business because it might be your last POC. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. the POCs are a very nice thing in order to try things out, and I definitely see it as as a thing to do, um, so that we expand and we uh, like allow people to learn i mean and allow the teams to grow the thing is like you've rightfully stated arthur it's all about timing so if you know that you're running a project which is like really having uh, a three months or run time and after three months this might not be even used by anyone because you're trying to check if you have a market fit with your solution probably going you know like with with the things which you don't know it isn't a good idea. And also this time span is not good for learning. I mean, the organization wants to learn if this problem, a solution fit together, right? So this is where we focus on. But if we're running a product and that product has long-term visions, right? Not like very short-term, but long-term visions, then it makes a lot of sense to try out new things in a POC form. And what I also saw happening, and I think this is the right way of, of doing things really, is that if you have enthusiasts which are trying to do a POC, they will l- learn something. But at some point, it's very like advised to take an expert from outside of your organization and put him on the team for a period of time so he can really help in uh, deploying the technology in the project, right? Because when you're about to start with a new tech, you probably need an expert who's going to do some knowledge transfer, who's going to bring you up to speed, right? So that, that for me, that's the advised path to like externalize that learning right so you need to have a teacher to to learn you otherwise you can learn on your mistakes and uh, trial and error that's fine if the company is going to be fine with it right if if there is no like time scale necessary here but i found it very frequent that we hire experts from places like microsoft so if you if you had asia you had some black belts in microsoft you had an enterprise agreement and then you get some help from those black belts specifically from the vendor so that that's one of the paths which i used to utilize. Uh, we had this opportunity together to participate in one of those POC sessions. Yeah, but I, I, I also uh, need to show you, maybe we will attach it to the description, the, the GIF where, what that was showing how the help of uh, external consultants uh, in the company looks like. It's, it's quite funny, so hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I will manage to, to find it. If not, we will cut it from this recording. <laughs> uh, so if you hear this, uh, the, the GIF is in the description. But what I liked also from your sentence, 
quite a long set of sentences was uh, to when you need to check the market if if your solution fits it might be beneficial to start with some even not not the perfect implementation but including the tools uh, using the tools that you know so uh, let's say some simple uh, solution in in the node.js if you're working in node.js on a daily basis because you're going to deliver it quite fast it will most probably satisfy some subset of clients that you will for example give it as a beta feature yeah or some you know closed beta feature or distributed in using the uh, a b tests or other you know feature flag based solution for limited amount of clients so you can check if they're actually liking it yeah? if if it fits their needs and then in the process if you when you see that it's actually you know they they caught the byte then you can create the poc with some right tool for the job so designed tool for uh, for the job and gather information about it uh, yeah, I, I would say that this approach, like with maybe even step farther, like doing full A-B testing, maybe if the organization al- allows it. So so we have time, we have money for this. And uh, we have like two, maybe three ideas even to pursue. This is like the perfect world for developers. Yeah, we can do like uh, two or three different solutions, put it on A-B or C uh, testing see the performance, see the the user experience, because it may vary also uh, for some reason, and then make a decision based on some metrics and, and all the stuff. But yeah, w- this is not often the case yeah, because of the money. And and most time. importantly, it's not always the developer's decision, right? So yeah, uh, exactly. d- doing this, this way of the, the, like doing things, really, a movement of the whole organization, um, because you need to collect those. And, and I kind of think that we as developers, we rather tend to have a smaller area for like decisions specifically. And one thing came to my mind when, when you guys were talking about the like trying things out in a like simple form. I think which, what can be leveraged uh, in such situations is really clean architecture. And what I mean by that is that if you know that if, if you're having your application and then you have a new problem to solve, like let's say that's the log aggregation, shipping stuff or, or, or implementation of a pub sub, you, you essentially know that you probably would like to have messaging. Let's assume you've did the homework and you know that you need to have messaging, but in a moment you're going to have to choose whether you're going to use Redis pub sub, RabbitMQ, Kafka, even hubs, whatever. Now, what you can do in order to secure your code base a little bit is to really abstract or provide proper interfaces in your application. So you probably would orient your application towards send a message or like send a notification and then delegate all the details into the particular implementation of that interface, right? So so that you can deliver your business like with Redis. So let's say you're most fluent in Redis. So you need to you would you would like to implement this using Redis PopSub fine, just make you sure that you're going to abstract this on an interface level so that if you have like a customer service, it's going to have a, like a dependency on a, like a messaging service, which has very simple methods. And then you hook in the Redis uh, like implementation behind. And later, if you recognize during A-B testing or whatever that, okay, we're going to go with Rabbit, you try to swap it. That doesn't go always so smooth, but it increases the changes. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's that's a nice and uh, I would say the uh, the way from the books how to behave uh, in the to 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 be open for uh, another changes in the application without the need of uh, reorganizing everything on the way. But uh, it's it's not that easy, unfortunately. Yeah, and uh, especially in startups, you uh, sometimes you. Uh, there's a feeling like some uh, technical decisions are almost written in the stone and uh, and doing some adjustments to be open to other possibilities is is not always welcomed uh, but uh, yeah uh, we developers learn when we really need to do it and then it costs like twice the the price than it could 
Okay, Gary, so I felt that we went from uh, the aspects of decision to actually approaching the decision. So now to summarize it, uh, I would like to ask you, uh, in what situations would you pick brand new uh, solution designed to solve the problem? I would pick it, uh, at, or at least consider it, uh, put it on the table, if I would have knowledge in the team, for sure. And if I would have a confidence that we can support it, if I wouldn't have it a, a, at that uh, point in time, and uh, we would end up, for example, with the conclusion that we shouldn't pick anything else because this is like the, the best one and anything else will be like a hack or something. I would f first, like, if we would have time, I would like allow to like make, get some trainings, maybe get the knowledge in the team and sure that like with us, the team, not as like one or two developers, as a team, we feel confident with this solution and we, that we will be able to maintain it and support it because even the shiniest solution won't work if we won't be able to support it. Yeah. I would also add to this uh, that uh, if we have enough time, yeah, so if we know that, uh, for example, the feature that we are going to deliver is not uh, crucial for the company, it's not a critical one, and our uh, brief estimation says that we have enough time to try out new things uh, without a fear that we will not deliver. Yeah, I think it, it's it's similar as with everything almost in the dev software development. Like, always to be pragmatic. Yeah? So yes, uh, I find myself often in the situations where, where uh, the best uh, approach is to, uh, to like talk with the organization, talk with the team and like this, sometimes decide, often decide that, uh, yeah, go with some simple stuff first and follow with the better solution later on. Yeah, so deliver what we have to deliver to the customers, deliver what we have to deliver to the business and then follow uh, with the better solution. Yeah? When it comes to me uh, picking a new tool for the job, uh, if I uh, that that's possible when I feel confident um, that this is going to like with high success fit to the problem, right? Because the, sometimes I, I can think like. I can think that GraphQL is going to be a solution. Uh, no, I need to know it. And in order to know it, I need to do some reading. I probably need to try it out on like local host, not with my product. This is what I like typically what I do is that when I'm having a new piece, I firstly create a small like side project just to try it out with like a hello world example, some very simple concepts. Because if I would try to test it with my product, I'm going to have the whole overhead of my product right now in order to quickly assess that. So I'm firstly doing a lot of reading and I'm tr trying to you know, like have a feeling about this by having a very simple project, like super simple project with it. And I, if I gain confidence that I, okay, I understand this and I, I feel that this is getting me where I want it to be in terms of like, it's really going to solve my problem, then it's fine. Like uh, adding to the thing which you talked about, like having the time, if I'm having like a five week project and I'm right now having a five week project at Golem, I'm not going to choose things which I'm not knowledgeable of, but if I have the time for it and I will do some reading and I'm going to make myself sure that I'm able to do it with this, then it's fine. And that's also very important that I learned this knowledge first because in a moment I'm going to try to sell it to the rest of the team. And if I won't understand this and I will get questions, uh, it's going to look, look really wrong if I'm trying to introduce a technology to the team while not like even looking as an initial expert in, <laughs> in that field. So yeah, that, 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 that piece is very important for me. So like making things un understood for me so that I, I kind of verify that that's going to fit and then I can take to the ex I can take it to the next level. Okay, so now let's take it opposite when you think it's better to uh, pick the, the the technology that we already know and I will let myself start it. Uh, so I think that uh, the, when you don't have uh, certainty that the new solution that you consider is going to deliver exactly what you need because you can't figure it out from documentation or or the POC, you didn't create a POC like uh, Grzegorz mentioned, 
then it's most probably better to stay with uh, what you have and start with this uh, approach, deliver MVP, and then think about switching to something better if it does not perform well. I would stay with the current solution, uh, which is like, for example, work in production already. If the the cost of the change doesn't justify basically the the, the move, yeah, because we have to like make the proper decision. Yeah, put the cost on the table, put the benefits on the table, and as more radical the change is, uh, I would expect a really big and drastic uh, changes in terms of the quality, the performance, and everything. Uh, so yeah, and always like. Uh, check to, to, to the organization, organizational aspect, not, not just the, the like technical one. And for me, uh, the time and, and the, the value to be delivered is like the main factor. So if I'm having a very short uh, delivery time, like in, in weeks, then I definitely stick with what I know um, instead of uh, new things. The other situation is where I don't feel confident about using the new thing. And by confidence, it's not only what I've explained earlier that I need to do like the POC and reading and understand stuff like that. But sometimes let's put it into an, into an example. If you're willing to or wanting to exchange the messaging solution, that probably touches like a myriad of places in the system. So if you don't foresee the consequence or all the necessary changes for that, like for that move, and a lot of people get affected, well, probably I need to be more sure. I need to have this more th thought through in order to proceed with this idea. So I'm not going to go with it. So for me, like uh, in, in cases like that, I stay. I, I will simply stay with things what I know. This might so sometimes be discardable work. Like, so I'm going to do things just for the time reasons which other things may do fine out of the box. Okay, but me doing this with the, that thing is going to take twice or thrice longer. So that's the, the, the reason why I probably skip. Yeah, sometimes a good feeling when you are trusting in yourself might be a good advisor. Yeah, so even the biz some businessmen said that uh, usually uh, engineers are, are not good businessmen because they need to analyze everything, while good businessmen make a decision in, in seconds. So, guys, thank you for that. I think we uh, we reached to the end of this episode. Thank you for your insights, for your experiences. And now, our dear listeners, it's time for you to share with us your experiences, your thoughts on our on what we said. So don't hesitate to leave us a comment, to follow us on our social platforms and uh, talk to us. Yeah, we, we are uh, willing to hear your feedback on that topic. So thank you very much. See you next time. Bye bye. Take care. Bye bye. Make good decisions. Bye bye. That's all for today. Thanks for spending your time with us. Visit our page on Facebook and Twitter, leave us a comment under the episode, subscribe to the updates and share it with others. We would like to hear your feedback so that we can prepare more interesting content for you to enjoy. Hear you next time!